afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Music Palace. <laughs> this afternoon is all about our founder, Paul, and his wonderful musical life. So, uh, Paul will be providing most of the music for this afternoon, so I'm going to hand over to him. <laughs> Whilst it's not the best quality of video, it was Paul playing his original signature tune, Powder Your Face with Sunshine, on the country's most famous Wurlitzer, and Paul was certainly proud to have been involved on that occasion. So now a little about the man himself. Paul was born on the 22nd of January 1948 in a Radcliffe Royal Infirmary in Oxford. And he often joked his mother was there too. <laughs> His father had been in the RAF and settled in High Wycombe, where Paul grew up. Paul was a very savvy person. Even in infant school, he discovered that if he got off the bus a stop early, he saved a halfpenny and he could buy some sweets. So he got off quite often and uh, it must have kept him fit. He may have looked innocent in the pictures, but there was always a certain sort of mischievous quality in him that lasted throughout his life. Some of the photos show. <laughs> As a child, he discovered a gramophone and some 78s in the loft belonging to his father. Many of them were theatre organ recordings. Paul was impressed with what he heard, so he played them a lot. Paul's dad, Tony, suggested a trip to Blackpool to see and hear Reginald Dixon and Horace Finch. This trip was to be one of many. Paul soon realised that he knew what he was going to do for a living. Club in Bayswater, he was given his first summer season in Amherstsfield. 1971, however, was probably the most significant year in Paul's life. 
Not only was he engaged to play for the summer season at the Sun Castle in Skegness, but whilst boarding at the Woodthorpe Hotel, he met Hazel and her daughter Janet. During the course of the season, Paul and Hazel spent huge amounts of time together, both personally and professionally. It was an extremely successful summer. The Sun Castle was packed most nights and it made a profit for the first time since it opened. It opened in 1933, cost £33,000 to build, and when Paul was there, made £33,000 profit. It doesn't seem a lot by modern standards, but it was a huge amount in 1971, and uh, led to Paul being rebooked for the next two years. Paul and Hazel formed a lasting relationship that culminated in them getting married on the 27th of March, 1975. The age difference made lots of people say that it wouldn't last. They certainly proved out as wrong. After 35 years of marriage, Paul and Hazel remained eternally devoted until Hazel's passing in 2010. <laughs> Chamber was built on the side of the property. With the help of Les Roll, 
they purchased a small Compton organ from the Odie Wilson. With the help of friends and family, they installed it at their new home over a period of months. Their new musical abode was soon christened, very appropriately, Compton Lodge. The inevitability of having an organ like that in your property is you get lots of people wanting to come over and hear and play it. Doing over 300 shows a year, travelling across the country, Clubland started to take its toll. So they decided to convert and extend the downstairs of Compton Lodge into a fully licensed entertainment venue and live in a large flat above it. Compton Lodge was officially opened as an entertainment space on Sunday the 5th of May 1979 by Les Raw with John Mann at the console. At that point, the organ had been expanded to three manuals and seven ranks of pipes. The venue was far more successful than they'd ever imagined. They had hundreds of coach parties a year coming to hear the Compton, and occasionally Hazel would sing a few numbers too. Fully licensed bar, it was a great success. Paul always tried to be accommodating with the catering. On one occasion, a man inquired what was in the sandwiches. And Paul said it was tongue. And the man said, I never eat anything out of an animal's mouth. So Paul offered him a boiled egg. The next video shows a typical afternoon at the lodge. I'm sorry about the quality of the recording. Video cameras weren't what they were, but they are about 40 years ago. But it shows the fun that was had at the time.
all great fun. Over the years, the Orb was expanded to its current specifications of four manuals and 20 ranks of pipes. It came one of the finest theatre orb venues in the Midlands. The console was from the Ritz Cinema in Belfast and is currently in the bar awaiting reinstallation. And now a video of Paul on one of the last concerts at the Lodge on the expanded instrument. Predominantly Paul's time was taken up by his summer seasons, Clubland and Compton Lodge. Over the years, he found time to make guest performances at many venues across the UK.
and is still on long-term loan to Folly from our collection. It still plays daily, every day that the park is open, via its playback system. And as Paul recorded a lot of the music that we used, he can be heard as near to live as possible at Folly Farm for many years to come. And our video of Paul, Paul in concert at Folly, playing a sunny and share number. Excavating the lift shafts, wiring, plumbing, and everything else that needed doing. As you'll see from the photos, Paul got his hands dirty. But he also helped with some of the technical bits too. There were lots of other volunteers who Paul was extremely grateful for. But today it's about Paul and we're concentrating on him. Paul and I were familiar with this Christie from its time in Barrow Memorial Hall. After much negotiation, we purchased it in 2013 and brought it down from storage in Ormskirk in four vans. 
It was certainly a day of heavy lifting, but many hands helped. As you'll see, an organ in pieces takes up a lot more room than when it's installed. The Christie was known to be unreliable in both of its previous homes, so it needed a lot of restoration. Paul wouldn't forgive me if I didn't mention one man in particular, David John from Leith, who had virtually every mechanical part of this huge instrument in his house over the course of many months to restore. The rest of the volunteers worked here to adapt and transform this redundant chapel into the music palace that you see here today. We opened in 2016 with John Mann performing the opening show, but this time Paul was able to share it with him. It was so popular that we needed to run the show twice. Here's a number from the opening show. We have been successful in establishing Paul Kerner's Theatre Organ Collection as a registered charity. So Paul was able to see already what his legacy would be. 
and had several years of pleasure playing for groups and concerts before his health started to fail. During the last few years of Paul's life, he did more and more online, as getting out was less practical. He created his own YouTube channel, Compton Lodge Studios, which has thousands of videos. He was very proud of it. And he also enjoyed the various comments that people made from all over the world. Paul had an encyclopedic knowledge of cinemas and was happy to share it. Paul had been a member of the Theatre Organ Club for decades and always felt very close to the club. He had been on its committee for many years and was really thrilled to have been voted patron in 2017. Here are some photos of Paul showing him with friends and having fun outside of music. Paul's sense of humour was what added the extra magic to the music. He couldn't tell you a joke, but if you asked him to, um, but on stage he seemed to have a wealth of them that flowed out naturally. Paul's pronunciations were also legendary. For instance, his pronunciation of the village that we're in is unrepeatable in polite company. <laughs> Many of you here know what it is, though. Paul was an entertainer. He was fun and we had hours of laughs together over the years. Many of the jokes are not repeatable on stage, but those of you who knew him will surely remember some of them. Paul had an amazing career and I've only sketched some of the highlights today. I could go on for many more hours about his work, working life and our antics, but there's only so much you can do in an afternoon. I must put in a personal note here. I met Paul and Hazel over 20 years ago at Barry. They subsequently invited me for Sunday lunch at the Lodge, where Paul mentioned a couple of minor jobs that needed attention on the Compton, which I duly really fixed. Somehow, that led to me joining him with the massive expansion of the Compton organ, which in turn led to everything else. Our initial casual acquaintance led to us being best friends. He was a true friend to me, and he allowed my hobby and my knowledge to grow. He made my dreams come true. His passing has left a huge hole in my life, but fortunately, what he has left means that we will never really die. And there are many happy times to look back on. Paul never retired. He had an active interest in the organ world right until the end. Even when his health was significantly failing, he managed to come across here to film with ITV for Fishnock's Choice. This turned out to be the last time that Paul actually played for the organ. I've come to Alice here in the Ronda to find an amazing collection of theatre and cinema organs. And 
the man in whose honour they were lovingly collected and restored. So Paul, this collection is named after you. That's, that's quite correct. Uh, along with my friend Ben, we decided to have too many organs being thrown away or put into storage. So we decided here we could put this organ in which we have purchased uh, as a starter and we've collected all our instruments since. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got a pretty comprehensive collection now. Larger, larger small instruments, both pipe and electronic. And uh, we've, we've obviously done a lot of work. The preceding march came from the Opera House at Blackpool. They have one of their special shows one year. And we were able to purchase that and the festival curtains. And uh, everybody, all our visitors, in fact, to the trip, it has a really big sound when they walk in. And you have a wonderful career. I've been a professional organist for over 50 years and uh, I've played in some wonderful venues, the Beaumont State Theatre at Kilburn in London. Uh, I've played at Blackpool Tower and, and Blackpool Winter Gardens, Blackpool Opera House. Um, in some of the seasons, Escape Ness, Aberystwyth, Douglas, the Island Man, the wonderful Villa Marina. And, uh, it, it's just been such a pleasure doing something that I like and people paying, paying for doing it. Wonderful. <laughs> People, uh, people that come and listen to the organs and uh, they always go off happier than when they arrive, which is what it's all about. Really. Whilst we're going to see Paul as he was latterly, we're going to come up to the interval now with a clip of Paul in his prime. Coincidentally, this excerpt took us to the interval in 2016 in our opening show. During the short interval, you'll find teas and coffees in the licensed bar over there. This might also be a good point to tell you at the end of the second half, there will be a hot buffet served, so don't disappear at the end. Right, that's enough of the domestics. Now back to the man himself, including the first half. Yeah. 